Hi there and welcome to Bustanet. Yes, on today's show, we are doing a quick video on how you can build a good system for Football Manager. This approach can be used for any version of Football Manager and I expect it to work in FM18 as well. In order for you to develop a really solid system, you gotta you got to have a plan. And the thing about the way I approach the game is I look at three elements in any system. First, you're going to have to look at your tactic. Now, the tactic itself should be something that you're familiar with and something that you're comfortable with using. Uh, it can be any tactic. A, a, that tactic should allow you to have options as well. Whenever you're playing against a certain side, you should be able to uh, flip the tactic around. Like here in this particular case, we have a 4-4-2. Now, if I want to build my play up on the left side of the pitch, then I will just have an inverter wing back on one side. If I decide I want to stretch play, I can drop the inverter wing back and use full backs instead. And I can easily overload on either the left hand side of the pitch or the right hand side of the pitch simply by changing roles. So whenever you go and look at your tactic, don't be locked into thinking that there's only one way for a specific tactic to work. This applies to any kind of a tactic in the game. It applies to a 4 2 3 one, it applies to a 4 3 one, 2 it can apply to a 4 4 2 or 5 3 2 They all have options. The hardest thing for people in this game actually is, okay, what shape should I use? Now the shape in itself, if you're not sure, always start on flexible. In later shows, what I plan to do is I plan to um, show what kind of shapes you want to be avoiding when you play against certain formations. But on today's show, what we're going to do here is look at just building a solid system first. So get a tactic, find out your options with that tactic. The second thing you want to do is you want to train for those options. Now, in my 4-4-2, I like to play, sometimes I like to go wide, sometimes I like to overload certain parts of the pitch by using inverted wing backs. So I train. I find players out there who can play in multiple roles. I have a winger here who can easily play as a fullback. And I've got a defensive midfielder that I scouted and I turned him into an inverted wingback and he can also play as a fullback. So this gives me a lot of options when I want to approach a game. I can easily change roles and duties within the same tactic without having to worry too much about coming up with a new formation. I have options within this one tactic to play it in different ways. The second thing that I do is I scout for the future. I plan, uh, I look for players. Like in this particular case, I've got a youngster, his name is Ben Miller. My scouts come back to me telling me he's like three to four stars. We scouted him, we found him in Newcastle, we paid 500000 for him, we bring him into the club. So now he has some of the right attributes that we require. He's got solid uh, ex uh, physicals and uh, decent mentals. And all I do now is I, I put him on, if he's uh, 17 years old, he stays in the club. When he's 18, he goes on loan. So now we develop him. We tutor him so that he gets his, the right personality. And then we start to put him into the first team. So the goal here is you've got to build for the future. You, you, you know, that way um, I don't have to worry about uh, suddenly replacing a player. Here, I have a plan to look at him seriously for the first team by the time in three seasons time. So longevity comes from building for the future. And I also look at players to see whether they can play in multiple roles. I need versatility in my system. So sometimes I don't retrain them. All I do is I check whether their attributes allow them to play in different roles like Elia Pipoli, my winger. Finally, I scout the opposition. I find out what the manager likes to do, what his preferred formations are, and I scout the previous matches to find out where their key pass combinations were set up, how they like to build their attacks up, um, whether or not there are certain specific players I need to target. Um, this will give me an idea of how I want to set up my 4-4-2. Do I want to build my play up on the left or do I want to build my play up on the right? Do they have a very dangerous playmaker in the middle? Perhaps then I will, you know, overload that area of the pitch. So that playmaker now has a problem. He can't find passing options because i got too many of my players over there. So this is how I go into a game to uh, develop a good system. A good system of playing football manager isn't about just the tactic alone. It's about knowing what your tactic can do, what kind of options are available to you, finding out what kind of, uh, how versatile your players are, whether they can play in multiple roles. That gives you an edge because then you just need to change roles and duties. And finally, understanding how you can prepare for a game ahead of time. Now, this is something that the AI can't really do. 
Your ability to build a good system with, where you build in versatility into your tactic is something that the AI hasn't been able to replicate for itself. This gives the human manager a distinct advantage over the AI manager. When you play in a human-human match, then this will also be an advantage for you too. Now, I hope you've found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, you know, find me on Twitter at BusterNet or addicted to FM.com, my website. Once again, I'd like to thank all my patrons for their continued support. And yes, for the patrons, there's a longer version of this video just for you guys. So thank you very much for joining me today. I'll catch up with you guys again soon. You take care. Bye-bye.